Hello and welcome to this VBA for Excel beginner tutorial. In this tutorial I'll be going through a brief extension to our previous sorting data tutorial. If you haven't already done so, I recommend watching that video before starting this one. In the sorting data tutorial, we went through how to create a macro that will sort data in a workbook such as the one open here into a much more presentable format. As you can see, the data in this workbook isn't sorted in a conventional format, but instead is sorted into blocks of data related to each company. So here we have company 1 and all the data related to company 1 here. And here's company 2 and the same set of data, but this time related to company 2. And so on for all 10 companies. The end result of the previous tutorial was a macro that sorted this data into a more conventional table format, as you can see here. However, often, when you need to sort data, it won't be nicely formatted into one Excel worksheet for you to work with. You probably need to copy data from another program or individual Excel files first. However, rather than first copying all your data into one file and then sorting it, I'm going to show you how to create a macro that will sort your data for you as you paste it. I've based this tutorial of the sorting data from a statistical program called eViews. You can see the output from an eView file is here. However, so that people without eViews can try this tutorial out for themselves, I've copied all this data into an Excel file first. However, you'll see that the concepts that you will learn in this tutorial won't require you to just work with data from Excel. I'm going to go ahead and open that file now. If you want to try this tutorial out for yourself, you can download this workbook from this video's page at VBA for Excel. Com. Now, as you can see, this file contains a lot of data related to one company. You'll also notice that down the bottom here, we have several worksheets that contain the same data, but related to different companies. Now, although there's a lot of data in this worksheet, I'm only interested in certain parts of it. I want to create a table that contains the company name, these five coefficients, and the adjusted R squared for each of these five companies in the workbook. Now I could copy and paste the data individually, but this would be quite time consuming. So instead, I'm going to create a macro that's to speed up the process. The first thing we're going to need to do is create a new workbook for our sorted data. Now we need to insert the headings for our table. So in cell A1, I'm just going to enter company name. In these next cells, I want the names of the coefficients that I'm interested in. To do this, I'm going to go back to the workbook with the data and set the coefficients names from cells A8 to A12. Then I'm going to copy them to the clipboard. Then I'm going to go back to our other workbook and transpose the names into cells B1 to F1. To do this, right click on cell B1 and select Paste Special. When a new dialog box appears, we're interested in the option down here that sets transpose. Select the box next to it and press OK. Now we need the heading for the adjusted R squared. So I'm just going to type this in to cell G1. Finally, I'm going to adjust all the column widths. To do this, click on the A here, hold down the left mouse button and drag across to the G. Then right click anywhere on the area up here and select the column width. I'm going to enter 15 and press OK. Now we have set up the table headings, we're almost ready to start recording our macro. However, first we need to copy all the data related to the company to the clipboard. To do this, go back to the other workbook and select cells A1 to E19. Then right click and copy them to the clipboard. You'll see why we need to do this in a moment. Now go back to the other workbook with the table headings. Select cell A2 and then go to the developer tab in the ribbon and press record macro. I'm going to call this macro paste and sort or one word and set a shortcut key of control shift and A. Make sure the macro is stored in this workbook and press OK. Also make sure relative references is activated by pressing the use relative references button here. Now, 
The way I'm going to make this macro work is to paste everything in, put out the data we want, and then delete everything else. So that now it's recording, select cell A3, right click, and paste the data from the clipboard. Now all we need to do is move the data so that it's under the right headings. I'm going to come back to company name and do the coefficients first. For these first five coefficients, and you can select all of them and copy them to the clipboard. Then I'm going to right click on cell B2 and use the transpose function we used earlier. For adjusted R squared, I'm just going to copy and paste it into the right cell. Now, for the company name, we could just copy and paste it like before. However, if you look at the cell, you'll see we really only need the part where it says company1 and not this preceding dependent variable part. Luckily we can use an Excel formula to sort this out for us. To do this, double click on cell A2 and type in equals sub. The formula we're interested in is this substitute function here. As it's already selected, just press tab to get started. The first thing we need to enter is the cell location of the text we want to edit. So click on cell A3 and then press comma and space. Next, we need to enter the text we want to substitute. So type in quotation mark, dependent, space, variable, colon, space, quotation mark. And then do a comma and a space. Finally, we need to enter what we want to replace it with, which is nothing, so just enter two quotation marks and press enter. You'll see that the end result is that the cell now just has the company name which we want in it. However, the cell contains a formula that is dependent on a cell that we're going to be deleting in a moment, so we need to change it from a formula into a value. To do this, right click on cell A2 and select copy, then right click on the same cell again and select paste special. Set the radio box next to where it says values and press OK. That's what the data sorted out, so we just need to delete everything that we didn't use. Once you've done this, select cell A3 so the macro is ready to be run again and then press stop recording. Now, to test that our macro is working, I'm going to select the same data from the other workbook related to company 1 and see if we get the same data. I'm just going to execute the macro now using the shortcut key we set earlier which in my case was Control shift and A. As you can see everything has worked out fine so let's see if it worked for a different company too. I'm going to go back to the other workbook and select the sheet with company 2's data on it. I'm going to select all the data and copy it to the clipboard. Now I'm going to go back to the other workbook and execute the macro. As you can see, all of our data has been sorted out just as planned. That's all I wanted to go through in this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and check back for some more tutorials from vba4excel.com.